Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room in Rockland, California. Um, the ARRL put on a presentation at the 2024 convention, the title of which is Ground is a Myth, M-Y-T-H. And um, I want to strongly disagree with that, uh, that title uh, because uh, ground is necessary for your safety and I, I don't want uh, people cutting off the ground connection on various pieces of equipment or not tying it to ground as called for in the electrical codes. It could be dangerous and for that reason I really object to the title that the ARRL came up with. Um, the presentation was put on by the brilliant K6WX I can't compete with her. Sounds like a physicist. She's incredibly bright, and but the presentation misses uh, a bunch of things. Um, for example, in one spot, she's talking about ground fault interrupters or ground fault outlets, and actually, they're ground fault circuit interrupters. Ground fault circuit interrupter. She says that uh, if they see an imbalance in flow between the neutral and the hot leg, uh, if there's more current th flowing through one side as compared to the other, which is correct, that it will trip the breaker. It does not trip the breaker. Uh, it, the outlet trips and stuff downstream from it will no longer be energized. She says she doesn't know where the current flows. Where did it go? Um, and I think she says she's confused about that. Well, it's called a ground fault because current, instead of flowing down the neutral, a portion of it flowed down the ground um, to the uh, main panel and then into the uh, common point ground and into the ground, actually. There is a common reference point. Uh, if you have electrical poles, uh, and transformers on them in your neighborhood. You've seen the line that comes down and it's tied to what? A ground rod. If you go to all electrical panels on every house that I've ever looked at, which is thousands, the um, uh, main panel is connected to one of at least three different things. There are other options, but one would be an oofer ground um, one, another one would be a driven ground rod. Another one would be a combination of two ground rods. So the electrical panel has its uh, neutral coming in and it connects to ground. And at the panel, and with some exceptions at sub panels, the ground and neutral are connected together and the two hot legs run out from there. Why is that important? It's important that all current flows back to the main panel in the event of a fault. We do want the breaker to trip, whether it's a ground fault circuit interrupter breaker or a standard breaker, we want it to trip very quickly in the event of a fault. So what in the world am I talking about? I'm talking about your station. And the question often comes up, I'm on the second floor. Uh, what do I do for a ground? I run a wire down the ground to a driven rod. Uh, I'm trying to achieve an RF ground. So let's get that out of the way first. In my view, there is no such thing as an RF ground. You can't achieve it at your station. If you had a, an extensive system, perhaps. But for all of us, uh, we're not going to have, quote, an RF ground. It doesn't exist. Lightning protection is a different issue that occurs at the tower. And you can look at the National Electric Code, uh, Chapter 8, which covers grounding the tower and then running a series of rods back to the main panel. So again, it's tied back to the main panel. This discussion is why ground is not a myth and why it's important to your safety. So uh, let's cover a couple things I'm going to bring up. Yeah, hopefully some slides. One is um, that this applies to any floor, whether you're on the first floor, the 20th floor, you're in the basement, 
it doesn't matter. The application of what I'm going to talk about is still the same. And what we're talking about is that ground is not a myth. Now, on your uh, desk, you may have uh, a transceiver that looks something like this or not, but it could. Um, you might have a power supply. In the presentation from the ARRL, they talk about a, a ground screw on the power supply. And she wonders what that is supposed to be connected to. It shows a line and a ground symbol. Well, we'll discuss that in just a minute. Ground may be a misnomer. Bonding may be a better description. So you got a power supply, a transceiver, and maybe a watt meter, SWR meter, or some other box to do some magic at your station. And you may have a coax switch. Now I'm going to draw a line to the coax switch, but... Uh, I included it just for the sake of here's a place to hook up uh, what we're going to call a bonding strap. So this, I tried to keep it as clean as I could. So this thick black line is, let's say, RG213 running to a switch. And then it would go from here to presumably a... Um, protection device of some kind of listed arrestor, and that arrestor is tied to the electrical panel. Um, to call it a lightning arrestor, I think, is a huge mistake because it's not going to arrest lightning uh, unless it happens to strike down the road a bit and it comes in through a power line, which happened to me a couple of times, and then it can go anywhere it wants to go inside your house. So here's what I do, and I think this, this works for me, and it might work for you. I used a braid to a common point. Each of these is about the same length. Each box on my station, I've got um, three amplifiers, uh, three transceivers, and other stuff, and they're all tied to a common point ground, which is a copper pipe under the desk. Why do I do that? Um, it isn't just for the fun of it. Uh, I'm trying to achieve something by having each of those uh, braids. And some people don't like braid. I like braid. Uh, and some people say, well, it corrodes. Uh, I've had it 40 years in some cases, and it maybe has tarnished a bit, but it does not uh, pose a, uh, uh, a different impedance over time or a different resistance. And basically, I'm looking almost entirely at resistance. Yes, it's impedance. But uh, the resistance of those straps is relatively small. Its um, impedance is uh, relatively low because it has a large surface area, flat surface area. So each box then rises together and falls together in terms of volts above ground. Uh, so if the one box is one volt above ground, they're all one volt, volt of, uh, above ground. Um, that's the idea behind having those straps. I want them all tied together. I'm taking a look at it. Then that common point ground, and I did a YouTube video where I used an Elkin uh, distribution box. It's the same thing. And then connected to that is a wire, and it runs, in my case to the main electrical panel, which is close. Um, yeah, or it could tie to a copper pipe up in the attic. Or as long as it goes to the electrical ground, to the bonding termination device or common point ground at the electrical panel. How do you find that? It's usually below the main panel. Uh, and the ground rod is connected at that point also. Uh, I don't recommend connecting a driven ground rod. Um, I want all current to flow back to the main panel. So if there is a fault, it um, will trip a breaker, a ground fault circuit interrupter breaker, or whatever. And if you want to read up on the National Electric Code, it's chapter 8, 81021, and some others. And uh, I think 25094 is another spot that you may want to read. So is ground a myth 
No, ground is not a myth. It's important. I know that there was a YouTube video where the expert claimed that cutting off the ground pin on electrical plugs would solve uh, hum and other things on transmission, during transmission. No, it won't. What I showed in the diagrams will. Do not click that pin. It's there for a reason. It is a safety because ground is not a myth. Ground is important and you want to keep your equipment well grounded. Can you ground it for RF? No. But you want to make sure AC is all grounded. Um, I do have, like I said, multiple amplifiers, multiple transceivers. Uh, two of the amplifiers are capable of 1500 watts. I've got a Yagi, homemade Yagi, homemade antenna tuner. The homemade antenna tuner, tuner is also bonded to the system. Um, all that stuff is connected to a common point ground. You may say, well, there's coax cable that goes from here to there. Okay, but I'm just making certain that there is as much as possible the same potential above ground by having a short, wide strap. That, in my view, is the way to hook up a station. If you have a difference of opinion, great, let's hear it. Uh, if you believe ground is a myth, I'd like to hear about that too. Um, if you watched the ARRL presentation and came, in, came away with the idea that ground is a myth, I'd like you to explain it to me because I certainly didn't in watching the presentation by uh, K6WX and she is the vice president of the ARRL. So for them to do a presentation that's titled Ground is a Myth, I frankly think is dangerous. Trying to clear things up with a simple diagram, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube in Rockland, California. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and uh, do the thumbs up or thumbs down, whichever you prefer. 73.